This is Andrew Corbin, and welcome back to another Offensive Weekly Breakdown for West Virginia. Today we're going to look at how the Mountaineers attacked the Kansas defense this past weekend. Um, one thing I definitely noticed when re-watching this game is that West Virginia kept it really vanilla against Kansas. They they really didn't have that, that flavor of the week type play because Kansas, they like to mix up their coverages a lot. They go man, they go zone. And most importantly, West Virginia just outmatched Kansas in practically every level of this game. So Neil Brown, they they knew that they just they just had a run of vanilla offense and run the ball a lot, and that's all they needed to do. And that's that's really what they did. So I'm gonna break down these plays, but it's the same type of stuff that we've seen all year: screens, clearouts, very simple stuff. But I'll I'll go over it. lots of it. I've been over before though. The first play I want to talk about is the tunnel screen that West Virginia runs all the time. If I had to break down the West Virginia offense, if I had to pick four plays um, that their offense revolves around they've been known all year, this would be one of them. This is West Virginia's one of their most like commonly ran plays all season. Uh, the only difference here is they use Caden Prather, who's broken out as a really nice receiver the last few weeks. They use him to get the screen this time, which I think they've only done once before on this type of play. Uh, but Sam James, inside slot guy, he's going to get the blocks here. And as always... The two guards in the center, they both pull to the middle of the field to pick up those blocks of the screen. Letty Brown leaks out to the flats back side. But one thing I do want to point out here is I haven't actually mentioned this on this type of screen before. Is that Jared Day throws these off his back foot because he takes two steps back and throws off his back foot because he wants to get these, these four down. He wants to get these four down defensive linemen. He wants to get them as pull them bait them as far away from the screen as possible so he takes two steps and he throws it off his back foot because he wants to get these guys as far backfield as possible to open up as much screen as much space as possible for Caden Prather in the screen and he does a nice job after contact to get a first down in a lot of yards this next play is an RPO screen to the boundary side. Jared Diggy here, he's actually going to read this defender right here for Kansas, this slot guy. Um, he's gonna, His eyes are going to instantly look at him when he's deciding whether to pull it or give it to Letty Brown. Uh, because what he's going to do here is, this is a very simple power running concept where the tight end and the guard, they both pull inside and Letty Brown's going to go straight down the middle. Uh, Jerry Diggy, he's reading this guy right here. Why? Because they're going to set up a simple screen concept right up here. If he steps out here, um, he's they're, he's handing the ball off to Lady Brown because what you have is you have one, two, three, four, five, six blockers against six people inside the box. If everybody gets their block, you're going to have a lot of space. So that that's just simple math. That's that's the numbers they want. How they free up those numbers is with this RPO because if they see this guy, if he steps out here to cover this slant, then they're running the ball. If he comes inside of the box, then you don't have numbers anymore. But where do you have numbers? Out here because there's only one guy to stop this 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 screen up here because this guy's going to block out and and outside guy who's the one getting the screen, he would go up top. In this case, they actually run the ball because if you look at the slot guy, I'll play it here. Look at the, look at the slot guy. So Jared Diggs eyes, he instantly looks to this side of the field. He steps out here to the screen. He's not in the box. So Jared Diggy knows, oh, I'm just going to hand it off because you got six people guard, blocking six people, and that's a really nice gain on second and long to set up a third and manageable. Here's a double hitch slant concept that West Virginia ran a few times against Kansas. Uh, top of your screen, Sean Ryan's going to run a slant. Letty Brown's going to go to the flats. Uh, these two receivers outside and inside slots the field side, they're going to run hitches, and Winston Wright's running a slot bait. All these routes are important on this play because in this case, Kansas is running a cover three blitz where they send the Mike linebacker uh, getting that extra fifth man pressure. And what this does is it opens up the middle of the field because when Sean Ryan runs this slant, there's nobody here to defend him because when Lenny Brown goes to the flats, this guy right here, he's going to come down to stop Lenny Brown. That's why this route's important. Once he comes down, once Derrick Diggy reads this guy, he sees that he's guarding Lenny Brown, it op the middle of the field is wide open because this Mike Linebacker blitzes, he comes down, and that's an easy first down for Derrick Diggy because he throws this thing really early because of that read. But if that was not open, if this let's say this Mike Linebacker, he drops back into a little zone right here. What this does late in the play is these two hitches, it creates a very simple high-low to the field side. It's very hard for defenders to guard both the hitch route and the slant and zone coverage. It creates a very simple high-low. It's very hard to cover all three of those. And Jared Diggy go to whichever one the zone defender is not. And your very last read in this play is Winston Wright on the slot fade, but I've never seen them go to him on this play. So I'll play it here. As you can see, Jared Diggy's eyes, he's right on this outside linebacker. He comes down to stop Letty Brown in the flats, which opens up Sean Ryan wide open um, behind him for a first down in a really nice game. 
Here later in the game, West Virginia's running the same exact play out of the same exact formation, double hitches and the fade. Uh, Sean Ryan's running the slant and Letty Brown's going to the flats. Um, except this time, Kansas is running a cover one man. They got a, one high safety, but you can't see him in this camera angle. Um, but they go to the Sean Ryan early in the play here again just because he simply beats his man. Sean Ryan does a really nice job getting the defender's leverage one way and cutting it back inside. There you go. He makes a really nice move, and it's just open space once he gets past his man for a first down. One thing I do want to point out is, and this is not something that West Virginia did wrong, but Winston Wright does a really nice job of getting open. He that That is a touchdown if you throw that to Winston right on the slot fade. Obviously, Diggy made the right play there. He saw Sean Ryan open, and that's his first read. He goes to Sean Ryan. Winston Wright is your last read on this play. But I do think it's it's good to point out that Winston Wright beats his man in man coverage almost every time on a slot fade. So he's a really valuable asset to this team. Speaking of Winston Wright being open on the slot fade, this time they actually drew up a play to get the ball to Winston Wright on that route. Uh, Isaiah is was running a little smoke screen just to isolate Winston Wright on the slot fade. Top of your screen, they're just working their way towards the middle of the field. Uh, Kansas, they're running a cover one man blitz here, so they're going to send the middle linebacker up the middle. Here's your one high safety. He's going to drop back. And what does West Virginia love doing against cover one man? I'm telling you, what they did against Kansas was very vanilla stuff. It's just what they usually do, nothing too fancy. So this was a design shot play to Winston Wright. They're going to work their way middle of the field. They got cover one man. Diggy sees that, that coverage. So what does he do? Of course, he goes to Winston Wright. This would have been a touch down if the Kansas defender didn't hold on to uh, Winston Wright and he got flagged for it too. As I said, West Virginia kept it very basic against Kansas. Uh, this is a very simple clear out concept that I've talked about at least three times in my previous videos uh, where they have Winston Wright going underneath and everybody else is just running deep routes down the field to clear up the space underneath the zone for Winston Wright. Uh, Letty Brown goes out to the flats. I've talked about this play many times. I said specifically how they like running it on third down and long, and that's exactly what they do here again. Uh, there you see everybody's just running deep, clearing up the space, pulling them all back to give um, some open grass down low for Winston Wright. They get those a nice ball, and Winston Wright's just faster than air belts in the Kansas defense, and that's why West Virginia loves getting it to Winston Wright in these kind of situations because he is West Virginia's best receiver in space. 